my two kids, you put them in the car, Ava, yeah, and you got them all buckled in, right? Yeah. And you're like, away we go. What is the proper procedure of okay. doing this? So the proper procedure, when you have a child in a five-point harness, which is every child under 50, yeah. under 50 pounds, okay? Some of you have kids <laughs> under 50 pounds in, in, uh, <laughs> in boosters already. But anyway, when you're yeah. in a five-point harness, you shouldn't be able to pinch these straps at all. There shouldn't be any slack in them. Your chest clip should be at the armpit level. Uh-huh. And your um, crotch, slap, uh, crotch strap should be firmly uh, uh, applied. So you want the shoulder straps to be as close to the child as possible, okay. as close to their body so have, as possible. We have, yeah, do we, we have, have video, video of you doing this? Okay, yeah. so we have. Yeah. So talk about we about do, yeah, today. we look at Ava today in a puppy coat. So here's Tanya putting her in her nice puppy coat. And she is <laughs> attaching the chest clip. She's beautiful. Thank yeah. you. And also putting the straps in the crotch strap, and you are putting your finger underneath the strap, and it's hard for you to get your finger under there. And an alternate way to do that would be to, yeah. to pinch the strap to see. Now you take it out of the coat. You haven't done anything to the straps. Nothing. And look how much slack there is. Room, okay? There's room for another child in there. Wow. Well, I did not realize. Were that, you Were you surprised, Tanya? I was. I was. I mean, literally. You know, I just got back from a very cold climate, and so that I had her strapped in exactly like that in my car seat right. in Canada, and. Um, when I when we started to talk about this, I thought, wow, I really really put her in danger. The, the, how do we dress then our children in cars? It's freezing. How do we keep them? Okay, so 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 the key thing, and and it, it really is quite easy. Is, is preparation. Okay, yeah, you put the, their coat on. You go outside to get to the car. You take their coat off. You put them in the car. Strap them in appropriately so that those straps are close to their body. Then take their coat and do what we did. I would have never ever yeah, thought of it. We turn ever. it backwards and we put it on the kid. And then when the car heats up, guess what? The kid gets overheated. They just chuck their off. coat and they're not yeah. squirming out no. of their seat. You should so, have it in too so they're yeah. nice and comfortable. And if you have a small baby, yeah. I mean, you can take a, a swaddling blanket and put it on the outside. There's any number of ways. Yeah, I think we have video of you doing yeah, that. Let's, let's take a look and see. Let's see <laughs> so our audience actually can understand yeah. a little bit more of what we're explaining. So back in the seat she goes. And this time, again, that beautiful chest clip right at her armpit level. Nice tight strap. She's in a real thin fleece there, which can keep her nice and warm until the car heats up. And then we just take her coat and put it on backwards. And when she gets overheated, she just chucks it off herself instead of trying to unbuckle her seat and get out of her coat, which is okay. what a lot of kids right. try to do. Let me, let me be devil's advocate here sure. for a second. You get it, it, too much of a good thing is not good because you get them in there and they can't move and my kids like yes. to wiggle. Right. So when is loose too loose? Okay. How far? So, the, stu so yeah. the studies at University of Michigan have shown that four to four inches of slack, which is about half of what we saw in Ava, mm -hmm. is enough to permit a child to be ejected through are out of their car seat, oh, no. or to at least what's called jackknife in front, which means their head will strike the, the, the seat in front of them, mm -hmm. generally below the level of the extra padding that's required on top by law. So you've got a kid jackknifing, their head hits right here where there's no padding and there's just a lot of spring on the right. bottom part. Uh -huh. And so you basically have about a 14 times greater chance of spinal cord injury and right. critical brain injury, and a four times greater chance of death from ejection. I, I gotta go. I wanna just give the guys in the booth a second to queue up, because I wanna call back that video. Let's now that it. I know what, what you're seeing. about, I hadn't seen the video, I heard you talk that. about it. Let's take a look one more time at what we saw at the beginning of the segment. And the key thing here to understand is that the force of a crash at 30 miles an hour is like falling off a three-story building. Oh my so the compressive force on the coat is will cause a slack what? and out of coat. So that coat's coming off too. Yeah. The child dummy whipping forward. And just watch when we run the test again. She goes flying out. Even her jacket sliding right off. That, wow. that is yes, right. Let me ask you, I mean, that's a child, does this include adults as well? Because we all wear puffy coats and it, put on our... It does, know. and it's a, it, it's a lesson for all of us because yeah, here we are, we're freezing in California. Freezing is a relative here, yeah. but we all are wearing our fashionable puffy coats. Yeah. The key thing is that for when you have a seatbelt, if you're in a belt positioning booster or if you're in a seatbelt, mm -hmm. you want that seatbelt as close to your body as possible. So the easy solution is open up your coat, get in the car, put your seatbelt on so it's close to your body, Button your coat over it. Definitely, you're down there. You've you got the furled bra. 